So the iPhone 13 is finally here and with all its amazing features, let's talk about cinematic mode. I recently just got the iPhone 13 Pro Max. I'm actually loving it already. And uh, color is supposed to be silver, but I think, uh, I think that looks white. So for those of you who don't know, cinematic mode allows you to capture video that looks like it's taken with a real camera, giving you that shallow depth of field, uh, while well, your subject is in focus, you got that nice blurry background. It also allows for automatic focus tracking. So this all emulates what a real camera can do, but it's literally just software doing it. It's actually kind of mind blowing when you think about it because while you're shooting the video, you're telling it what is the subject in focus and then it's masking that out and then blurring the background. To think that it can just do that on the fly while you're shooting video, is pretty crazy and it's probably going to get even crazier like in the next five years will we even need cinema cameras will i even need my canon r5 well i kind of hope so let's quick talk about how to adjust some of the settings when you're shooting in cinematic mode so if you open the camera app on your iphone 13 and go to cinematic mode one of the first things you're going to want to do is actually turn your phone left so it's horizontal and tap that little arrow on the left hand side and this is going to bring up a few adjustable settings that you can manipulate while you're shooting the first setting you can adjust is the camera focal length so at 1x you're actually shooting at 26 millimeter and then if you tap that 1x it'll actually zoom in into the 3x camera and shoot at around 77 millimeter. Next, if you tap the F, you can adjust the aperture. So as you would a regular camera or DSLR, you can determine how shallow you want the depth of field. Basically, how much blur you want between the subject that's in focus and the background. This can go from F2 all the way up to F16, which is going to give you some depth of field, but it's going to act very much like a camera would, where the background's not going to be as blurred out at F16 as it would at f2. Finally, you can adjust exposure by tapping on the little plus minus icon. And I usually like to mess with exposure because especially in low light situations, I find the iPhone trying to expose for all areas in the scene and it just gets a little too grainy. So a lot of times I'm actually bumping that exposure down so I get a lot less noise in the final video. So in terms of the in-camera focus tracking, it's actually really easy to do. You'll simply want to tap on a subject to hit focus and then if you want to change subject tap on something else in the frame and it'll focus on that. You can also double tap on a subject or person to set automatic focus tracking. So let's say I'm filming Allie, I can just double tap on her on the screen and as I'm moving around and filming her, it's gonna keep focus on her. Also, if you tap and hold on the screen, it's gonna lock the focus at a specific distance from the camera, making it really easy to simply lock that focus in, almost like you would set a manual focus on your own camera and then film from there. It honestly took me like a few minutes to open up cinematic mode on the phone and just start shooting with it. And I was just already super, super impressed with it. So what I actually did was took my Ronin S gimbal, rigged my iPhone 13 onto it so it would be stabilized so I could get a nice smooth shot and took a bunch of video in downtown Phoenix. I actually think it came out pretty sick. I'm quite impressed with it, but take a look and see for yourself.
So I'm super impressed with cinematic mode. As you can see, all that footage, I'm pretty stoked with how it came out. Would I use this phone for like a professional video shoot? Probably not. The camera quality and the software on that cinematic mode and masking out the subject, it's not quite there yet. The Canon R5 and other cinema cameras can really do some incredible things that definitely still hold its place in terms of content creation. This is still a really fun mode to shoot in. I think it brings to life a whole new way of creating video content and I'm excited to see where this goes within the next couple of years. It could get to a point where you really can't even tell the difference between like my R5 and the iPhone. In terms of the drawbacks of shooting in this mode, I think there's two main things for me. The first one was shooting at that 3X camera, the 77 millimeter focal length. The software really had a hard time masking out the subject and blurring the background. I could see quite a significant amount of blur around Alley. Most of the footage was pretty much unusable, so that kind of sucked because that focal length really seemed to give you a nice compression with the background and the subject. So. You can only do so much with that, but shooting in the standard 1X camera, the software is much better and definitely much more impressive results with that. The second drawback in shooting in this mode is you're limited to 1080p at 30 frames per second in Dolby Vision HDR. So it definitely looks good, but if it had the 4K option and you could change the frame rate to 24 frames or 60 frames and get some slow-mo, that would be preferred, but I would imagine the software's already doing so much work that it, it had to compensate for that by limiting that frame rate as well as the resolution. This is definitely a mode that I'm gonna keep experimenting with more, and I'm pretty stoked about having this option just in my pocket and shooting it whenever I want. It's pretty sick. Let me know your thoughts on cinematic mode in the comments. What did you think of that cinematic video that I shot? I'd love to hear your opinions. Are you gonna get the iPhone 13? Are you not? Are you gonna wait for the 14 or the 15 or who knows how many years of iPhones later you'll wait? Also, all of the music that you're hearing on this video, including the music to the cinematic footage from the iPhone, it's all from Mood Sound Design. So if you go to moodsounddesign.com, we offer some of the best music for your videos because all of our music is 100% originally written for filmmakers, YouTubers, videographers. So check the link in the description and start a free trial with us today. And I'm confident you're gonna find some incredible music for your next video project. Also, don't forget to hit that like button as well as the subscribe and the notification bell. It definitely means a lot to me. I spend lots of time on these videos, making them just for you. So that'd be fantastic. And hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Peace.